I has rights, you have rights, even animals has rights. <laughs> so earlier on, I got in two professors, an animal rights activist, and a woman with a hedgehog to ask them some questions. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I'm the best guy ever, and Mumkey Jones is here. Hello, everyone. I'm the Nostalgia Mumkey. I remember it so you don't have to. <laughs> Classic comedy. <laughs> uh, uh, Hypocrite is here. Uh, I don't have anything after that. That's a good one. That's a, uh, <laughs> That really stole the show. We really should just quit right now. Yeah, what a great bit. You should, like, you should, like start a, a whole thing about that you should like start a whole like <laughs> channel and like branch out and like just make it a whole franchise i bet I that like channel can... would be awesome incorporate wearing glasses into this character that you've just come up with <laughs> yeah. that might be that yeah might that be monkey with the glasses mm. <laughs> yeah that's a good mm. one uh, and I'll, Tom I'll, do Oliver. This, I'll do this great thing where i take a movie and i condense it into mm-hmm. six seconds and it'll be like mm. titanic in six seconds it's a pretty good idea it's actually, yeah, actually, it's Tom, 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 Tom. Here. Hi, Hello. I'm, I'm here. And uh, I guess Ben's here. Ooh, ooh, ee, 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 ah, ah. <laughs> Talk Monkey about cultural Saint. appropriation. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay, so today we're talking about. I just, I just finished. Animal... I just finished my monkey studies class 101. <laughs> uh, How you dare know, well for my gen, for my gen ed requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. National Monkey uh, History the... Month. <laughs> that Truly was the degeneracy February, pervades. Oh, uh, ouch! Uh, harsh. Uh, okay, <laughs> so today we're talking about animal rights. Animal yeah. rights, and in fact, if you believe it or not, there is an Urban Dictionary definition for animal rights. So let's let's take a gander here. Uh, animal rights: a philosophy that suggests. Does that a vape? Did no. I just hear a fucking vape? No, <sighs> of course not. Of course oh. it wasn't. The vape Wait, vape is here. God. It would, ne- it would never. That would never happen. <laughs> All right, yeah, okay, guys. Right. I think we need we need to punish Ben for this vaping bullshit. And I'm prepared uh-huh. to do a monkey siren every time I hear this shit to alert you all because I have great monkey <laughs> years. All right, that sounds like a good idea. If I hear fucking like vape, idea. I'm gonna go. <laughs> this, and then you'll this all is, know. This is just going to be a game of cat and mouse of how how subtly can I vape before <laughs> before I said I'm just going to be pushing the boundaries every well, time. This is going to be just like that, that monkey with the symbols uh, in Toy Story 3. Mm, yes, exactly. Mm, exactly. A- okay, anyway, so here, excuse here's our me. definition. Yes, yes. Excuse you indeed. What's the, uh, what's the definition mm. of a uh, douchebag who vapes all the time? Ben Saint, look oh. it up. It's in there. <laughs> Picture uh, of me. So animal rights. It's rare a that the, the definition is shorter God. than the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens. Animal <laughs> rights. A philosophy that suggests some or all animals have the right to possess their own lives. Contrary to popular opinion, animal rights activists do not ask for voting rights for chickens or pigs. Rather, they <laughs> ask that animals not be used for food, entertainment, medical research, or clothing. Some activists maintain that there is a distinction between the sentient or self-aware animals and and those with a large degree of self-awareness are to be afforded the right to possess their own lives. Okay, a little bit more. Animal rights are also largely tied to dietary lifestyles such as vegetarianism and veganism who adhore the consumption of meat products in accordance with the principles of animal rights. So, Blah. wait. In, there you go. So, we're, uh, in this podcast, animal rights mm. means um, animals uh, shouldn't be treated any differently than humans. Like, if you wouldn't eat a human, you wouldn't eat an animal. Is that what we're going with? I don't think well, so. I, I don't think know. it's that's more like should more... we treat them? I mean, that's, with, that, like, defini- decency. that definition seemed to imply that believing in animal rights, period, means that we shouldn't eat animals. I love animal rights, period. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a little bit that's a little bit beyond the pale of, of what I would expect. Formally, I mean, there's other definitions here. Whatever. Okay, we're gonna come up with our own reasonable definition. Yeah. I think the animal rights in general is a kind of a broad scope as to whether animals. Like any 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 organism besides human, whether it deserves any rights at all to its own life, to its existence, like whether we should respect it God. and its habitat, I'm the already, it's like, all orchard. under the same umbrella. I don't care at all. You don't well, care. It's the, okay. it's the worst well, that, topic that's a, ever. That's a position. See, I'm glad you signed then. up for this episode. Yeah. Hippo. See, see you later, yeah. hippo. <laughs> you wanted me to be here. 
You no, you <laughs> wanted yourself to be. Mom you signed up, goddammit. Nobody signed you up. Monkey said he wanted me to be here. Yeah, I don't know why. Don't, no, don't tell them my secret. I got you and Tom here specifically because I like you. Oh. <laughs> Gib, you have a hippo who is your son. You have well, a stake in son. this argument. He's, he's, he's your daughter then. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know. hip, 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 hippo, hip, oh, he's yeah, my yeah, roommate. Yeah. Don't kind assume of. his gender. Hippo's, that's, hippo's, that's gonna, right. hippo's listening to this podcast and shedding a single tear as he hears this. Consecutive single tears. I'm just his roommate. Oh. <laughs> okay, oh, well, no. all right, let me let me take my position here, and we can we can go from there. I think that uh, I, I actually I was gonna say my first thought was no animals deserve any rights at <laughs> all, including a, a, humans can do whatever they want to animals, and I do not give a fuck. I've changed that opinion slightly because I realized that if that definition was if I use that, I don't actually think humans have very uh, you know uh, I don't think that human intelligence is anything particularly. Uh, like special in the sense that it distinguishes us from animals. We're just better at achieving our goals. So what I'm going to say what? is, I think, yeah, well, you don't you know, think humans... we're smarter than animals. No, no, we, we are. We are definitely smarter. But for example, some humans have intelligence that is, I mean, not like animal level, but like closer to animal level. So like, where does the where does the, well, the cutoff lie? I think even lie? somebody with Down syndrome is smarter than a gopher. I, I, I'm not disputing that at all. But what I am saying is there is like a measurable scale of intelligence and you shouldn't just say all animals don't matter. You should take like like something like a dolphin, people say, right? Dolphins are generally pretty smart. Yeah. If you can measure the intelligence of a dolphin and say that it is worth keeping, and I don't know what the standard should be, but if we could figure that out, that should be the standard for whether all or right. not we care about I, it. I have, I have a thought on this. Okay. Um, dolphins, people like dolphins, because, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, they, they they can do tricks, they can talk, they'd be like, ee, 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 and we're like, oh, that's nice, you know, I, I, I like that thing, I won't kill mm -hmm. it, and any animal that has, um, enam uh, has made us enamored with it, uh, uh, so that we don't kill it, is, is smart enough to live, I think it's just, there's no, like, a level of intelligence, there's no, like, a data point, there's no math number that we can attribute to any like like on a scale what animals should we kill and what should we not oh uh, i disagree i think i think if uh, we like animals to be alive then they should live okay but just think about it for a second what you're doing there is just making an emotional argument for uh, things uh, exactly. that humans like yeah exactly okay. that's okay. that's my point i don't care about like oh what's the the sh we should try to like categorize everything and and make a like a hard distinction if, okay, but you here's, here's, if the, you problem. Like your here's dog, the problem. You with shouldn't that eat your dog. Now. But if other people don't care about their dogs, they can eat them. I, it just okay. depends on who Here, you are and where you are in the society around you. Here, here's the reason why there's a flaw in that argument. Because what if humans were to someday meet an, uh, some organism that was, you know, human-level intelligence or higher, who knows, but was was just repellent on many levels? Kind of like the, uh, the bugs from uh, Starship Troopers. What if we were to encounter a species like that and just assume that they were bad and gross and we didn't like them? Even if, like, so, so I'm proposing a universal standard for we will care about an, a creature. I don't if know it, what those you know, bugs are like. Criteria. Can they, can they, can they talk to us with language? Yeah. Well, they do communicate with each other. Okay, a lot of them are just grunts, but they do have like queens, <laughs> and those seem to have like human level intelligence, if not higher. Uh, not like super intelligent. Well, then but they, she they do... should be an ambassador, and then people will be like, "Oh, I guess, I guess these people, th these are like a, this is a different race. We should be like yeah. t treating them like, 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 like a minority." Well, that's, that's you're that's totally yeah. Well, so like uh, terribly, I, mean, I guess. So like herd them into <laughs> herd them into camps and cook them and eat them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, okay. I think Starship Troopers is actually a great. Uh, a great example of this because the whole deal behind Starship Troopers, fantastic movie, everybody go watch it if you haven't, is that humans got into this war with the bugs based mostly on a, a misunderstanding. Bug war, if you will. It was in fact a bug <laughs> war. It was 100% a bug war if only Munchie was here. Uh, <laughs> oh, I forgot about the bug war. It, you it should never every forget day, about ben. the bug every war. Day, ben. Oh my it's god. Like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, this, <laughs> I'm part of the problem. That's right. The Syrian refugee crisis wages on every day, and you just turn a blind eye to it, Ben. So, too, does the bug war. Yep. Uh, never <laughs> that, forget. That describes me to a T. Uh, okay, so so in that movie, you would, okay, the point is that humans in that movie don't give a fuck about the bugs because they're gross and they don't understand them. Even though, they're, like, throughout the movie, there are clearly signs that the bugs are only defending their territory and are only, like, retaliating against humans because humans, you know, aggressed against them. Uh, and are like trying to colonize their their you know solar system and shit, so that's why the bugs attack humans. 
Uh, it's based totally on a misunderstanding, whereas they could totally have gotten along or just left each other alone if they just didn't fuck with each other. But it's, but it's like the propaganda of, ew, emotionally, we don't like these bugs. And the, the, the propaganda throughout the film is fantastic at, at illustrating how nonsensical it is. Um, it just, like, humans just start stomping on cockroaches on Earth as if that's a fucking, like, resistance against the bugs in space. But, but you understand my point here. It's just that we All need right. some sort All of right. hard I, I can, system. I can, I can, I can alter my, my stance a bit to, to fit with that. Okay. Um, say, for example, where there's, like, you know, a bug comes and it says, uh, no, we're, we're intelligent, you, you idiot. And then one of the humans <laughs> is like, oh, they're intelligent. Wait, we should stop killing them. And then mm -hmm. there's other humans that are like, I don't care, I got a gun, P -p 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 mm -hmm. I'm gonna smush them. That, that, then <laughs> at that point, it will be up to the humans to decide amongst themselves, democratically or however they decide things, whether mm -hmm. that new species should be considered a beast or a potential, you know, uh, you know, new, you know, species we can talk to. And that will be like, it, uh, what I'm saying is, a universal standard is mm -hmm. too you know the amount of things we could ever find out in space for example is ridiculous i don't think a universal standard will count for the whole universe i think we should just take things as they come well uh i mean you you can separate it into different components like if they are if they are actively trying we, to kill you this entire we're, race we're talking about we're here we're here today on the pcp talking about animal rights we're 10 minutes in and, and, our, and our, the scope <laughs> of our argument has already expanded to a universal extra 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 gal galactic scale it it has to though it has to it because i'm talking to. about a universe yeah, okay, it really we, doesn't have to Nate. We, can, we can talk <laughs> believe these, it or these not. arguments will apply to my thoughts on like why we can eat meat and, sure. and i that like kind of stuff. Yeah, so we can go back more to that. than i like like hugging chickens. Well, sure. Agreed. But Agreed. like, what about something like you mm -hmm. know doing makeup experiments on monkeys? Like, where where do you draw the line on? Well, that? they look. Like, fabulous, how does the bug they? empire, <laughs> Nate, help you answer the makeup monkey question? Yeah. Simply, simply because the same principle applies. So, okay, monkeys are mon <laughs> monkeys God are really really <laughs> retarded and stupid. But monkeys, <laughs> monkeys are okay some God of the time. God damn it! I, like, okay, the thing. Why, why do why do humans, uh, you know, care about dogs? Right? It's because dogs a are generally like loyal and they'll you know they like your scent, and they get used to you, and they like it. Um, and they're cute. And they'll, they'll and they're be cute nice to you. Whatever. Right, and they're also like attractive. They're, they're, visually. they're, they're the cute. Time. They're attractive. cute. And, most yeah, importantly, they're highly attractive. Mo most importantly, <laughs> that they're subservient. Like if if all dogs yeah, were sure, like by right, default, right. like r vicious, and you had to tame every single one, we wouldn't like mm -hmm. dogs. We'd kill them. They'd and be like wolves and, and, and lions. And also, all dogs would have. Yeah, because they're because they're pure of heart, unlike humans. Yeah, unlike. Okay, humans. but here's the thing about dogs. Um, so we you know we we enjoy their company as a species very much. We we've bred them to be that way, and you know that may or may not have issues but assuming that that's just how it was no no problem there but but at the current day like people like dogs because they're nice to us but does that <laughs> and that's current that's why we don't discussing animal rights <laughs> and well and that's why like we care about them in general as as a species but like is there anything do we know that a dog really what is the value of a dog's life to itself you know if you kill a dog uh, is what, a dog what is not entitled you, to the sweat if, of his own brow <laughs> I, I no, I don't think that he is. Oh, yeah, mate, I think yeah. I, if if you kill a dog, I think it won't know that it's dead because it's be dead. Well, so, a human that doesn't know that it's well, dead yeah. either. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. That's, See, that's so. What's the standard for not being allowed to kill? You know, just as a one example of something you can do to it. Or well, enslaved. you're allowed to kill a dog. It's not like you go to jail for it. That's not actually true yeah, all the time. That's yeah, yeah. There's there's laws. There's animal abuse laws and stuff. Right. And uh, we're here. We're here saying revoke them. Oh, Trump, revoke that shit. It's time to go back. Make America great again. Let me kill my dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Single greatest social issue facing us today. I'm a one. I'm a one issue voter, guys. I'm just. I vote. I vote for whichever candidate will let me kill my dog. <laughs> Okay, but but to get back to the point uh, that Mumkey was making about like using animals for for makeup testing and stuff, like okay, so clearly the animals don't seem to enjoy that too much, right? That they they don't they're not into it in general, and you could you could call that mistreatment. But how much should we actually care about the suffering of of any animal? And in this case, you know, we're talking about a monkey, a, a monkey. I would say only we should only really give a shit if it is like. 
uh, at a certain level of intelligence where it's like well, cognizant. See, you're of just things. making Suffering. it more complicated than yeah, it has making, to be. Just, here, here's, just am I? Here's am what I? I. Here's what I think. Just, like, a, I, just appeal to your emotions. If you like the monkey, and you want it to be happy, no. then you should you just let it. You know. I mean, I mean, but, but, that's me, not good enough. Here's the thing. Like, I, I would not like paint makeup on a monkey's face and then like mm-hmm. i don't know like bla- like blast it with a fire hose to see how much punishment it could take before the makeup wore <laughs> off or something like i wouldn't do uh-huh. that i would feel like i was a shitty person if i did that therefore i think it's a shitty thing to do and they shouldn't do it i mean that's but why the- do you feel that way i just is it because you're is it because you're anthropomorphizing that monkey and projecting the feelings that you as a human would have if that happened to it's you because which, they share like 99 of our dna we I, share like fifty percent of our DNA with a fucking banana, and but I we feel still sorry don't worry for about bananas how bananas feel. Eat them. It's more yeah, than I bet you do. The banana, but yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, we 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 know we understand faces and two eyes and stuff. Monkeys have mm-hmm. like a face, you know. Yeah, as I don't a, know. as a human being, animal, as a human animal, we recognize a monkey's face and we think, ah, oh, he's got emotions, he's got a face, he's got a, he's got a family. But we don't know that. That it's, that's an assumption it's being made. True. Yeah, it's but true we're we imperfect can't... beings. We're not robots, Nate. We can't be robots. We You'll should never strive be a robot. for perfection, guys. We be should a strive robot. for a better it's system. True. It's true that we can't know that the monkey has feelings like our own, but we can't know mm-hmm. that about one another either. We can't see into each other's we, we, minds we can, any more we than can we can see logical... into the monkeys. We can make logical distinctions about what other humans are experiencing. I'm just saying well, that it's we more can, difficult. Well, we can, we can make informed guesses. Well, that's all we can ever do about anything yeah, in our entire lives. and that's lives. what we're doing when we say, oh, this monkey looks like it's in pain. I feel bad. Right, right. No, okay, but I'm saying why should we care that it's in pain? What is the standard Nate, we're using to give I, a shit I have an about answer that? That's for a real you. question. I have an that answer is a real you. question. Because when we decided this would be the topic, uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to monkey rights, I'm not even memeing here. Uh, it's something that I'm actually <laughs> kind of passionate about, and I knew I was going to get emotional talking about it. And when, I, mm-hmm. as we all know, when I get emotional on this show, I don't give the best arguments. So I actually wrote something up that I wanted to read about uh, okay. mon- monkey okay. rights. <clears throat> okay, if you guys are ready. Does this only apply to monkeys, or does this apply to other? Just animals for monkeys. Too? Other animals, okay. I don't okay. care as much about. But you know, I got I got a thing for monkeys. <clears throat> Does somebody have, like, a bird chirping in the background? Sorry, my window's open. You want me to close it? <laughs> I'll get that. The bird is Damn very it. distracting. That ver- bird was thin. vaping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In present-day America, the monkey is still not free. The life of the monkey is still sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. <laughs> The monkey lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. The monkey is still languished in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. And so we've come here today to dramatize a shameful condition. In a sense, we've come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men, yes, monkey men, as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Written by me. Is that right? Written by you. Yeah, exactly. Good one. Good one. So that's why I think, I think monkeys I think should I heard have a similar, Did I not hear a similar speech that one time? I feel no. like it was, you know... That, that well, speech came to me in a dream. I said, I have a dream of this speech. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with that. I hate black people, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, all right. Of well, course, of oh, course. That was we my bit. Up... That's why I wanted to do the episode. Of course. It's a, <laughs> now it's I'm a, done. It's a good bit. I'll see you guys in an hour for the questions. <laughs> okay, can I just say I want to clarify just one thing about the argument, uh, and it, it's it was just that so so we don't care, right? When th- when you like squish an ant, nobody gives a shit. Does right. not matter. Because uh, ants are only cares. bad. They're only negative forces on my life. They don't give me happiness like a monkey or a dog. <laughs> You're right. Well, right, but that's still kind of an emotional thing. But like, even when you get to but something like a spider, being happy is intrinsically valuable. It's not just an emotion. It, it's be- it benefits my life in so many well, ways. If I'm a serial killer and I enjoy killing humans, then that makes me happy. But it does not benefit. Well, sure, you know, but that's like else. that's an offset. That's an outlier. We're talking like general humanity, not just the serial killers. Well, oh, but but these these are unanswered questions Nate, among I human society. S- I, I still don't understand what at, at all what you're saying. 
I, okay, I, I was yeah, trying to get to it's I, just, I feel, just. I feel like you've got. Yeah, go on, please. It's, lay, it's, out your it's, lay, out, lay out your thesis for us. <laughs> okay, it's very, it's very clear to me. Um, it's that okay. So P- P- we don't care if you know small insects or whatever die. That we don't, we don't spend a moment to consider uh, their well-being whatsoever. And yet we do when it comes to things that start to get a little bit more, you know, like us, you know, like a hamster or uh, a gerbil or whatever. And then Damn of course we get to like a dog. It, yeah, my <laughs> that's my dude. Uh, and when we get to something like a dog or I don't know, like a deer, just like and we even we we care about dogs more than deers and shit. I, I don't know what the standard is. So what I'm getting at is what exactly is the standard we're using for how much we care about the well being of so these your animals? Th- and so, is your, it, so your thesis yeah. is just a question. <laughs> that, no, no. My thesis is I have the solution, and what we should do is we should measure the intelligence of each of these animals, make an actual determination about how uh, like what what their value <sighs> right, is. Nate. But the thing yeah, is that applies just, to humans let's too. Just rank I'm aware that on a that's scale. exactly what we should do. And there you is, should take everyone as an individual and, you know... But there is uh, no, right, there is no his, scale. Right. There is no scale, Nate. You can't just well, fucking... That's what we should strive you, for. You right, can't just fucking measure Nate. everyone's me, IQ and be like, oh, here's the, where they fall on the spectrum of, of worth. What a brave new world this is. But we is. have to. Yeah, we right, have I think to. so. Let me, no, let me, there's, let what me. is your better solution? My better solution is that you is to not give shut a fuck? the is that fuck it? up, <laughs> you son of a bitch. I'm trying to solve problems here. Okay, get it. Okay, okay. You said the thing about we don't care about insects. I mean, some people do. And mm-hmm. if you anth- uh, anthropomorphize like an insect, if you watch it, you know, you can be mm-hmm. like, oh, look at him. He's going to go get his lunch. Like you can you right. can you can make like little like, you know, you can tr- uh, trick your brain into thinking of, of them as like you can you, know, you can be like Carl right. Pilkington and convince yourself that you saw a bee have a heart attack from yeah. overwork. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Stuff My like hero. that. So he is just I, a perfect example of this shit. <laughs> and it's he's the cutoff point for what what is not worth what is not worth yeah, human he, rights. He's he's just below. He's, he's just below the cutoff. He's point. right no. on the cusp. So basically, uh, the, the, it's not like universal that we all hate bugs, but we all like mm-hmm. monkeys. Some people hate monkeys. Hey, like, it's not even some, about hating. Some, some, it's just about not people, caring you know, about them. Some people hate giraffes. Some people hate hippos. You know, it's just it's just the way it is. Some people. It's, it should it shouldn't be about hating. It should be about you know, it's like whether we care about some them or people not, hate though, yeah. or whether they're some worth, people don't care yeah. about certain animals and they care about others. Right. The, the point I'm saying is that my stance mm-hmm. when it comes to animals is that I think, uh, you know, I'll respect them. I won't mm-hmm. kick a puppy just for fun. But if he starts to kill me, then I will. But if I want to eat that puppy, then I'll kick him. Well, if I want to eat that well, puppy, I'll fine. tell someone else to do it because I don't want to do that. Mm, mm. There are. I'm aware that there are complications to this. Like, uh, you know, when a baby is born, like it can't sustain itself. So, is it really valuable? Like, you have to take like the potential of the organism into account. Well, there you go. There you go. You, yeah, just, yeah, you again, dismantled your own argument. Uh, no, real, no, I real, didn't. Real cause, good. Cause real good. There, there has never, there has never been a case of like an ant getting right. intelligent and enough to be I, worth caring about. Right. It's never why, happened. Why do you care so much about the value? I'll tell you why. Because oh, I, I know why. Think about the long-reaching okay, ramifications but of our current it, 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 it just uh, idea system. To, 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 that is what I worry about. And I want, like, I'm just like, let's you know, get a good foundation now of, so that we can dog. be ready for I, the future, you know, whatever happens no value then. there. Uh, if you don't, if also, you, if, if dolphins are smart enough that we should care about them, we should figure that out and start killing them. Right, so we can hook up their brains to our spaceship and use them for faster than light travel. Would you just kill it I'm trying to make Gunbuster happen. I'm trying to make Gunbuster happen. just like, do you have any humanity at all? Why do you care about the value so much that it comes into everything? Thing you do. I think that like the only fuck the only mm-hmm. ethical system what happened? that makes that is that is coherent at all and isn't like mm-hmm. hypocritical is oh fuck I had a whole <laughs> yeah. I had a whole thing and I cut is... out. Oh, what oh. happened? I I had a I whole. I guess we just couldn't hear him. I had a whole thing and I said it and, and... Oh, say it again. We can interrupt Ben. It's okay. Uh... I'm listening. Uh, but the gist of what I was saying is, Nate, why do you care about the the, the value so much uh, when it comes mm-hmm. to, to to everything? If say you had a dog and you know you you punched in the numbers in your little thing, you mm-hmm. you realize that it didn't have any value. Would you just kill it right then and there, or you know, do you have any humanity? Do you do you, it's, do you, dude, it's, it's do you, not do you let any just of your deciding emotions to exist? kill it? It's about what it's about worrying about it. It's about being concerned about its well being. That that's the issue. It's not like whether I'm just gonna shoot things that I don't like. I that's just not something I do. I just All don't right. see why you, you care about like the, the intrinsic value of anything to to the point where it comes into every like like 
hmm, what should I worry about this? If you're worried about it, like it, like like on an in, like instinctual I'll, I'll level. I'll tell you exactly why. I'll tell you exactly why. Because I, human instinct is not good enough. We need logical systems to enforce human <sighs> behavior in the right ways. That's what we need. <laughs> Hippo, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right on <laughs> guys, board with, that, with guys, that exasperated sigh. You see, you guys, you guys think that like, oh, well, how could he say that? That's never been done before. Except so much of human it's behavior today like, has been Nate, shaped by We're not like shaking philosophy. our heads at what a rogue visionary you are. Like that's, <laughs> that, that's not. Then what's, what's the problem? <laughs> then what is the problem? Because you're just fucking talking a bunch of shit, man. You're Everything just talking I've said a makes bunch perfect of bullshit. Sense. I, I guess just, if, the, if the if the criticism is what I'm saying is too obvious, then that's great. Then uh, I hope that's no, true. It's not that it's, it's too it's just, obvious. It's just, it's just the way you're laying it out is just way too simplistic. And like, it, and, and it doesn't it doesn't have any application it. in our life. It's just of course it, you're I such an airy fairy thinking about all these concepts all the time, and then you come to like real life, and then it, it doesn't matter. Nothing of none of yeah, it matters. Can't we just talk about specific <laughs> things wrong. like overcrowding on chicken farms, or like the way we treat a pig? Like instead of like these weird phil- philosophical ideas that you Co- have with Star cosmic. Trek and Not shit. Not when Nate's cosmic on the stuff. podcast. Come on, you can you talk about anything you want. Nate's always all right. on the podcast. I, I'm so sorry for leading the conversation down a path that you guys can't follow because you're too fucking dumb. I follow it. I just think <laughs> it's Your little pea brains. Your little pea brains just can't comprehend the next level shit that's going You're on up there. Right. Hey, Nate, I can't that's handle right. it. That's right. I know. It's tough, man. It's well, tough. Well, let me, let me give my spiel. I think that the mm-hmm. only thing that makes sense in life is to put yourself first and to like, and to put your own needs above everyone else's because there's because if you if you don't do that, then what the fuck are you doing? Like if you say someone's been reading a little Ayn Rand over here. Yeah, what's well, wrong with your guys' guy? parents? <laughs> well, how do they <laughs> raise these two monsters? <laughs> well, if, if you're like, if you're like, no, that makes sense though. If you're like, on some level, fuck. yeah, I'm I'm willing to like sacrifice of myself. Like if there are people that are like worse off than me, well, there's always going to be people worse off than you. you can't help everyone. Mm-hmm. Like you can't do it. Like it just doesn't make any sense. You can't even live. Like unless you, unless I think that unless you accept. That like I'm just looking out for myself. You just you you either just right. can't live at all, or you're just going to be like wrapped in hypocrisy that you'll never that you'll never solve and will never be acknowledged. Well, so well, you, you and I think yeah. and I think because like yeah like you know you watch out for yourself. You you do what benefits you. You you know you help the people. You can help the people that like you care about because helping them helps you, and that all makes sense and is fine. You can give to charity because it makes you feel like a good person or whatever. That's all fine. But ultimately, so, ultimately, and this is just, I really think like I'm just arguing for basic human nature here, which I don't think, which I think is, should just be the default position. But I just think it, that what, that's what makes sense. And I think that that makes sense on a, on, a, on a species level too. I think that humanity should just be like, okay, humanity should put humanity's needs first. And other species, like, yeah, we can watch out for them because having them around benefits us. But when push comes to shove and like it comes down to it, yeah, I really think that we should like, to, if it... To benefit ourselves, anything should go. Anything goes, and other animals just we like fuck them, right? Like they gotta watch out for themselves, even though they so can't. You, we're just Nate lucky. We're just ben, lucky. We're lucky that other animals can't yeah, fight back. Yeah, we get it. But yeah, ben, yeah. So like, if you knew that your neighbor was like viciously beating his pet dog, you would say, "Well, I'm not gonna get involved. I guess that's fine. Dogs should get beat if the guy wants to. Whatever." Uh, no, no, that'd make me mad. How that'd does that benefit you? Because it makes me upset that the dog is okay. being beat. Well, I sure. So I guess it's on an individual level for everybody then where if you personally don't want dogs to get beat, then go for it. I guess so, yeah. I, like... I'm fine with that. All right. Uh, I think I, there's uh, enough good people in the world to stop all the dogs from getting I, abused all the time. I would like to I would like to think so. I like to think no, most I think, people. I think there is because if we appeal to the emotion, most people feel that way about dogs. So I think Yeah, like on okay. an emotional level, most people like most people are willing to eat meat but also feel sad when they see an animal being harmed, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Is yeah, but that doesn't solve anything. That doesn't help the situation at all. The, the, because the, like, like well, that's it, hypocrisy it, it, right it does, there. It doesn't the solve Nate, anything. The problem, Nate, is that that's that just is the not quo. an issue. You you say like, oh, the 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 the, the issue is like, you know, um, it's not what animals we should kill. It's like which animals should we, like what what should we be worried about? Like right. Like like what? Pro- that's not a problem. That's not a problem that comes up in my everyday no, life. See, I'm not that, wondering that, what I should that, be worried about. Just because it doesn't come up in your daily life does not mean it's not a problem. That's just that's just blinding yourself to things that you don't that you aren't aware of. Yeah, that but that's the whole issue that you don't think it's a problem because well, it what could is be the a problem? problem one day. How and could we it be, be a problem? 
uh, okay, here's how it could be a problem. It is possible that every cow that we murder for us to eat actually is a conscious entity and is really upset about it, and we're just committing genocide every single day. That is possible, and I would like to look into that. And I, okay, that, I mean, that's just one example, but I want to apply that logic across the board I'm to make sure we're sure doing the right thing. I'm sure cows don't like being killed. That's <laughs> yeah. why I said it's just what it, well... But that's the thing, whether we should give a shit, because if it's if it does if it just is reacting to pain in its pain receptors, then I think okay, people fine. react to pain exactly the same way. I don't yeah, think that, there's too much of a difference between a cow exactly and a human when it comes to death. Reacting to I, pain I, in our pain receptors is exactly what we do. Then yeah. tell me, Gib, why do you care if a human dies and you don't care if a cow dies? What's the difference? Well, I don't necessarily care if a human dies. It depends on who the human is. So I'm not, you only I'm not care by about default, things that affect you I don't by default care about humans more than I care about cows. I hear about people dying in the news all the time. It doesn't affect me at all. You would care if a, if a human died in front of you or if a cow died in front of you. You would have a very yes, different reaction to both that. both the same because it's death happening in front of me. It's very different. That would different not be the same. From yeah, knowing, the same. From knowing they that they they somewhere... Would not be the same. No, they wouldn't it, be the same, but they would both disturb me. Yeah, they would both disturb sure, me. If sure. Seeing something in front of you is, much, uh, is a lot different from knowing that something happens. I know slaughterhouses kill animals and I eat the meat. I know people die in, horrif in, in horrific wars and I don't eat that meat. That I mean... <laughs> they don't sell that meat. But, like, if I were to see either of those things in real life, I would get upset and disturbed and want it to stop. But I don't see it in real life. I don't see it all the okay. time. It's just out of, but my, the issue is, out of my vision. That, But just because... Okay. okay. The, the, the problem frankly, right you now, shouldn't, Nate, you, is that you are you're saying thinking... nothing of value. You are saying nothing of value. If no. I don't see it, it's no. not a problem. No. That is yeah. Tom's yeah. no, no, no. The, the whole thing is that, Nate, you're talking, again, from like a grand kind of like humanitarian vision of just like, we need to True. set a precedent that, that sets all of human behavior and elevates all of humanity as a species. Where mm -hmm. Gibb is just saying... I'm just trying to live my life, and half the like 99% of the time, I don't give a fuck about any of this because it doesn't affect me personally. It's two mm -hmm. different, just lifestyle choices and like philosophical perspectives on how to run yourself. It really You're... what I was doing there is I was just like, trying to explain to Nate why I don't care about his issues. Right, that he because seems like to have. you're you're not you're not concerning yourself with the long-standing. But that's not an argument against anything I'm saying. You're just saying you don't care. Yeah, and I'm explaining why I'm sighing every time you bring this up because I think it doesn't <laughs> matter. That's why I was saying it. It doesn't matter to you. Okay, got it. Doesn't matter to you. It does matter to me. Every okay. every week, it's just <laughs> Nate. Nate ha comes. It's the Nate presents some like grand <laughs> vision of like what how humanity <laughs> needs to change. Like right yeah, now. That's right. That's, that's why right. I and, and to we're this all show. and we all just I listen and sigh. Nate just needs to start a new podcast called Nate Fleet, where it's all about creating. <laughs> Oh, shit. A better humanity. The I best, want to be a guest on there. The best future ever. Can I be the co-pilot on that ship? Uh, I'll have to figure that out. I don't know if you're qualified. We need, so, we hey, need high level Nate, people. just to bring this down, instead of let's take it down from the grand uh, philosophy thing. Let's just look sure at some thing. specific examples, and then you can the use your philosophy. The only reason I start grand is because yeah. you can. Yeah, right, yeah, right. I like that's, that. That's monkey. the idea. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, uh, slaughterhouses with cows—they're kept in these little little bins where they can't move. They can't even step forward or sit down. They're stuck standing right. all day to mm -hmm. keep their meat nice and plump and juicy and all that shit and then mm -hmm. and then if you're killing what's it called kosher if you're gonna kill a cow the kosher way which is like the jewish bullshit you have to yeah, like hang right. it upside down and then cut it and then it bleeds out and it's very painful and torturous so what right, do you think about right. all that shit is that okay okay so here's the thing i think cows are under the standard of intellectually caring about them so i'm fine with all of it totally don't care it can see go i'm on okay all with killing cows to eat them and I, i'm not trying mm -hmm. to i don't know why we bought it in vegan shit at the beginning because that's retarded I'm yeah, okay with eating chickens and cows and meat, uh, but I, I'm not okay with it being tortured in order to die. I think you can just kill it in a second. You don't have to torture that fucker like the coaster Well, here's way. the thing. I think that I am logically consistent on this point because I say I do. I am not interested. I do think that it is not worth worrying about the well-being of a cow, and that applies to every aspect of its life. You can torture it. You can do whatever you want to. Chop off all its legs. You know, bleed it out for its whole life. Fill its veins with acid. Those are those are all equally things that I am not concerned about. Just about because the life it's of a not cow. as smart as you. I, That's but, correct. But Nate. That's correct. But Nate. Mm -hmm. If you were there in the slaughterhouse and they were like, mm -hmm. "Hey, best guy ever." Uh, come come here a minute. On on the one hand, here here's mm -hmm. like here's like a bolt gun, like like you're working at the slaughterhouse because I don't know. Just sh shut up. Stop criticizing me. <laughs> uh, okay. Here here's a bolt gun. You could 
you, you gotta kill this cow. Here's a, a thing that you could, like, just mm-hmm. jam a rod into this cow's head and it would be dead in a second. Alternatively, we'll pay you, like, slightly more if you will, mm-hmm. like, hang this cow up and, like, and, like, gently, like, and, like, slit its skin in, a, in some points and, like, you need to watch it bleed out for, like, an entire, like, several hours. Like that scene from okay. Reservoir Dogs. You gotta play the song and dance around and stab <laughs> it and shit. Okay, so we so can like, assume like, I'll get you... more money for doing something way worse, is the idea. Yeah, like, would you okay. just be okay. fine? Would you be like, oh, well, okay, it marginally benefits me, so I guess okay. I'll just I'll do it this animal. other way, and that's fine. Would, see, you, would you just see, be okay. fine with that? I, I hear what you're saying, and here's the thing. And the the, the issue is, uh, like, this this is totally involved, but is not a sort of a part of the logical framework. But, okay, so to answer your question, uh, I would not do that, no, and I think it is for a very reasonable re- you know, reason. Okay, it's that yeah, why? I, I am a normal human being with all my emotional, societal conditioning built into me, which, tell, which just informs me that, yes, these things are weird and gross and uncomfortable to do, and I am not, I have See, I've, like, this, never killed anything in my life. This is why I feel like you say you, you you're not being like hip- hypocritical with with your point you're, you're consistent that's on your, your point that's your job yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you, you say you're not being you're being consistent on your point but even then as a normal human you recognize that you will you know think differently from your big philosophical idea that cows well, are not important because uh, that, that's, well, a nu- well, that's a nuanced point there well i understand mm-hmm. nate that what you're saying is that like ideally logically it should not matter what we right. do to this cow and uh th- whereas like your your human emo you can't divorce yourself from your human emotional response even though like intellectually you know that it's fine but it still feels right. wrong because of lizard brain or whatever well <laughs> i mean i i guess i understand that point i well here's where there's i disagree also... with you i don't think okay. i don't think it makes sense to say oh here's a cutoff point because like the f- because like Carl Pilkington, who's just above the cutoff point, and like a silverback gorilla who's just Arguably. below it. They're like they're very similar to each other. Like there's not a meaningful like distinction between two things that are very close but on opposite sides of that cutoff point. I really think uh, you have to look at it as a spectrum. Or, or I am I am fully willing to look at it as a spectrum. Uh, I yeah yeah the, but the then but then but, but, yeah but but then the problem with that is that at no point on the spectrum does the value become zero. Except at the very end, until you get to an inanimate object. So even like a fucking, mm-hmm, so even like mm-hmm. a, if it's a spectrum, then even like a microbe has some minuscule amount of value that should be taken under some minuscule amount of consideration. You never, um, you never hit a, true. you That's never true. hit a cutoff point where you're like, okay, under this, anything goes. Right, uh, you know, it's but, kinda, I, but like, I think yeah, that you just have to involve practicality. Like, what's but practical? That's, but like, that's what your emotional response that telling you, oh, doing this to the cow is wrong. That's what your emotional response is telling you. Like, oh, even though this cow is not as valuable as, as a human, it still has some value, and I still have some empathy for it. Right. Well, the empathy just comes from us assuming that it feels the same way well, about, I'm say- you know, I'm saying, we do, Well, right? I'm Nate, saying you're... that your logical response, that, that your emotional response there makes logical sense, based if you view it as, like, a, an intelligent spectrum. Um, at, at, only See, to the, some extent. The, only way, to some extent. the way it seems, Nate, is that you're, you're mm-hmm. going into these, these logical situations um, with the idea that if you were a robot and you didn't have any emotions, this is what you would come to the conclusion with. This is what you would you would say, and then mm-hmm. you know. On the other hand, you have the reality that you wouldn't actually say that because you are a human, and I don't know well, why you have that that non-human robotic way of thinking, even well, even, even in consideration, because it can't happen right now. You're not a robot. It doesn't make I, any I, difference. Well, I, I'm, I, well, I, I, our I'm, system I'm, of I'm laws, sim- our sim- laws system already is an is a you know divorce from emotional stuff. We already have systems I'm in place that do stuff like this. I'm sympathetic to the idea of viewing things unemotionally and like trying to come to logical conclusions without bringing emotion into it. I think that emotion makes does sense. not mean best. By the way, you know we're trying to come to the best solution, which may or may not be our in, our built in human emotional this response. The best I'm you're more trying to come to the that. best solution. We were just talking about our opinions. Okay, well, let me let me well, say one point that well, is two Gibbs well, points to, to agree with what Gibbs been saying. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, here it is. Okay, here here's the thing though. Given the reality of what human beings are, if I met a man who told me that his hobby was like he's a he's a farmer or whatever, and he has cows, his hobby is to like drain the blood out of the cows and fill their veins with acid. He <laughs> liked to do it because it was fun, and he liked watching them scream and die. If he told me that, 
you know, I would be like, I would, my, my logic would still apply that, uh, you know, their lives don't matter. But what does matter is the kind of human being who would do that sort of thing is a psycho is, is a psychopath is not a, a person who, you know, like is a valuable member of the human race. Probably, probably like they are a freak and it is logical that they might also do those sorts of things to human beings. And so you can logically form from that position. Like, okay, this guy has problems. I don't like him. I condemn his actions on that basis. You can still condemn, you know, things that are clearly bad that we don't like. Uh, even if, you know, like the, the things being tortured are not inherently valuable. Well, That's, I want to, I want to say yeah. something about that, that torture and the cow thing. Okay. Um, the the whole thing with the kosher meat being you know you have to cut it by the neck and drain its blood until it's it's all mm. gone and that's the only way Jews can eat that and and halal meat <laughs> is very similar um, and that I don't agree with because to get the meat out of the cow you just need to kill it and to torture it like that is just you know it's a religious thing it, it, you don't need to do that to get the meat out, though. If you gave a Jew something mm-hmm. that wasn't kosher meat, he wouldn't be able to tell. He'd have no, no fucking idea. We yeah. could all agree that so, these kind of traditions are retarded. Yeah, traditions course, are retarded. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. like, uh, what I would say is that if there's something like, um, well, if you like beef, you have to kill a cow. And I'm like, mm, well, I like beef. Mm-hmm. I like eating beef more than, than I care about some cow I don't know dying. So right. I'm okay with it dying in the least harmful way possible because that's yeah. just the nicest thing to do is just to hope that it's the least harmful possible and they're, they're not being tortured. That's just ge- I think that's a lot of people's general stance is they, they like meat, but um, they'd rather, you know, the cow dies, ha- lives a happy enough life and then dies instantly without feeling any pain. Yeah, I'm on Hippo's side on that one. Yeah, like you're like, definitely right. Like, every, definitely like right. everything, everything dies eventually, you know, if you give it, you give them a quick death. Like, what have we really lost here? You know, I, I mean, everything should die. I think dying will be eternal bliss. I just don't want to be tortured before I die. And I think animals probably feel the same way. Do you, do you, do you think, do you really think, think the cow will get 72 bliss? virgins in heaven, monkey? Oh, <laughs> um, is he a halal or not? Uh, yeah, let's this. Yeah, this this cow prays well, five if, times if, a day. If, <laughs> if, if, if this cow did, did he strap a to... bunch of bombs to his oven yeah, and blow yeah. up the barn? He was gonna. He was just about to. Well, but then you he don't got slaughtered. You don't get those virgins. Damn it. Oh man. What if he died to feed some like ISIS fighters? You know, like some real <laughs> heroes. Is Muslim <laughs> cow a friend of Action Draft? Absolutely. <laughs> They're best friends. They're. He's like. He's ISIS like the. Cow. Uh, 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 you know, as as we all know, Action Giraffe is a globe trotting, uh, you know, cinema superstar, and and uh, uh, Mu- Muslim Cow is his like token racial friend that's uh, in the movies. Like Mus- a Muslims are race. Yeah. Muslim Cow is down there in Pokemon Hell, just real salty that he didn't quite get the chance to carry out his terrorist attack. <laughs> Holy shit! Somebody draw Muslim the Cow. That's my before, favorite character. The day before he was gonna do it. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. It's it, it'd be like it'd be like having a burger on the cow because it's a cow because it's a milk, female burger. Oh yeah, oh, yeah I guess sense. it would. I was it, it would look but... like it would look like a big black something or other, big like uh, like a rock almost. I got I got <laughs> a big black something or other for you, hippo. <laughs> <laughs> um. God, I don't know. Okay, I feel like I got out pretty much my whole position on this shit. Maybe there's some more specifics we can talk about. Anyone well, got yeah, any I've things been, that I really offend them? I have my position at all. And as, oh, okay, yeah, Tom. And, and, as the only vegetarian, I feel like I have something. Oh, oh that's right. Oh, I always fuck. forget. I always forget that you're a vegetarian, Tom. Yeah. So. I forgot I have no respect for you. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> well, okay. okay. Lay it down, I mean, dog. I'm not gonna... I, there's, like, that's the whole thing, is that, like, despite the fact that I'm vegetarian, I'm not, like... It's not something I like project out in the world, and that's why I'm happy that everyone forgets, because that means I'm not making a big deal out of it, and that's a good yeah. sign. Yeah, I um, guess you're doing it right. Yeah, right. So like that is when people don't know, that's a good thing. Um, but no. But by like, the way, I do feel like it's very. It makes sense for a lot of the like emotional vegetarians to like project, like guys, you're killing cows. Stop it. Okay, but but anyway, sorry. Go, like go I mean. I think that if that's your position, that's your like. I just I I just care about whether a person is consistent in what they believe. You know. I guess so. I try... I'm just saying I don't I don't blame like the crazy vegans out there because to them they really think that all around them are mass murderers and they're like, what's yeah. happening here? Where am I? Like I, I get it. If you if that's your view, that that's pretty fucked up. Well, I... <laughs> they're just they're wrong though. They're wrong. But you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, my my perspective is just that. Um... 
I, I think that ethical consideration shouldn't be given on any basis of intelligence. It should be on the capacity to feel fa- feel pain because you don't mm, okay. you don't have to be intelligent to suffer. Uh, if if you're feeling pain, like it's it's uncomfortable, it sucks, and I don't like it. Like I don't know about you, I try to avoid pain as much as possible because I fucking hate it because it's the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just I I don't eat meat anymore because like I'm uncomfortable. I, I don't try and have a meal or anything that I wouldn't be comfortable preparing, like start to finish myself like in all the actions um so i don't i don't have meat i'm not i'm i don't kill insects or shit i try not to at least like if there's like Mm -hmm. a big spider in the house and they're gonna someone wants to kill it i'll like take and i'll bring it outside because like i just i have this like innate respect for life and i don't think it it doesn't make any logical sense it's not uh even uh, probably like the correct thing to do but just like i that's just my perspective uh i feel that all oh, hey, Tommy, can I hit you with a hypothetical on that sure, one? Sure, sure, go for it. So let's say you discover, uh-oh, there's a big old mouse in my house, and he's he's tearing up my shit, he's eating all my food. Would you put a mouse trap, or would you just let him live there? Because um, well, you can't he... catch that fucker. He's running around right. like crazy. Uh, I, mm-hmm. that, that was actually going to be my next point, is that, like, when, when you have... There's there's exceptions when it comes to be, like, pests and stuff. Like, if you have a termite infection in your house, and they're fucking everywhere, or you're infested with mice, because we've had mice in the house before. Uh, it's a little different... Because like now they're directly affecting like uh, your the your, your, of your domicile life. and your 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 health essentially because like if you have an infestation that can like quickly like spread disease and fuck you up so like at that point it, it's I, it kind of comes under the same umbrella as like self defense like if a dude came to my house with a gun and tried to yeah, kill me yeah. like I'd be chill with killing him because like oh hell you know, yeah. <laughs> so it's the same thing with like if your fucking house is infested with shit and you're gonna die like you got to get rid of that too so like you know at the end of the day like. Again, kind of like what Ben was saying, you put yourself first and shit like that. But like, I try mm, to just like mm. go through life and not cause harm, uh, in in general. Try and like stay in my lane, so to speak. Like actualize myself yeah. to the best of my abilities without interfering with anyone or anything else um, intentionally. So, my that's my general philosophy, and that's why I don't eat meat anymore. I don't like kill bugs or like mice or anything like that. Like I try and, See, and the thing keep with that bugs shit is. I, I don't kill bugs either, um, but usually because, you know, I can I can safely get them outside the house or they're not bothering me. Like, if there's a spider in, like, a like a very far corner of, of the attic or something, uh, he can stay, you know, I'm not going to go there. Spiders are people, too. Spiders are people, too. Right. And if there's, if there's, but if there's, if there's, like, a spider, like, on my computer, behind my computer, I'm like, I, eventually I'm going to have to go back there, so I have to get rid of this guy. But I, the killing him is, there's going to be bug juice everywhere. I don't want True. that. True. So, so I don't kill things mostly because uh, there's no benefit to me killing them, as, aside right, from like right. a visceral reaction to uh, stop something existing. But um, I'm, you know, I, I generally I like to not kill things unless there's no other way. Didn't there used I, to be a soft drink called Bug Juice that had, like, cartoon characters on the lid? Oh, you know, Bug Juice is, like, a thing I had at Boy Scout camp all the time, which was yeah. kind of just, like, a cocktail of different, like, fruit punch mixes and stuff. Like, it was never very good, but they would just put, like, whatever kind of juice but shit they had around. But they'd have, they like, around. Yu-Gi-Oh's head on it or some shit, right? I can't speak to that. I don't know. If Does anybody like remember that? One. I don't even know what you're talking about, but I'll take your word <laughs> for it. I remember watching Kids WB, and there'd be commercials for Bug Juice all the time. I don't know. I just when know Hippo like said a Boy that, Scout it thing. sparked my, my nostalgia. It sounds vaguely familiar, so I, I maybe Slurm. maybe it exists. Hey, I, can I? Can, I want to ask Tom something about that though. Um, okay. About his pain stuff. It's not. It's not really challenging you, but like, so, so I think I would just want to ask to be the most consistent with your philosophy. Would you say that like the sort of ideal version of that would be Jainism, which is this religion that is one hundred percent focused on causing zero harm to any other li- a living creature to the point where they may wear masks at all times to avoid breathing in bugs and accidentally swallowing them and killing them uh you know in that kind of way and they're always careful to not step on bugs or anything would would no, you say that's like the ultimate extreme i don't think i think it's going a little too far and the and the mm-hmm. reason i i think i always say when i explain my philosophy uh i always say it's like you know be like actual maximize your own happiness without 
intentionally causing anybody else harm. I think intentionally is really important because uh, lots of the times in order to maximize your own happiness, you have mm -hmm. to unintentionally harm somebody else. Uh, right. An example right. I use a lot of the times is like, you know, if you're going for your dream job and there's one position for it, like in order to act maximize your own happiness, you got to shit on someone else's dream by denying them the job. Mm -hmm. So like if if you're in a situation where like it doesn't I make, can't doesn't harm make any a, sense. I can't make any harm sense other not people. To do it. Right. You know, like then all of a sudden you're basically like causing yourself pain and like the whole point right. is to not right. cause pain. So if you're causing yourself pain, it's the that's, most Yeah, like, somebody somebody that's... some in that mm -hmm. situation somebody's got to suffer. So right. it might as well be the other guy. Well, right. that's, that's when, like, the capitalistic system makes more sense because it's it's then, like, you both try as hard as you can and the one who is more capable gets right. rewarded and prospers, and that's what we want. That's what we want. Uh, exactly. So it's on. like, it's like if, if there are unintentional consequences, um, as long as they're not, as long as you're not intentionally or maliciously harming anybody else, it seems mm -hmm. to be okay. You know, because you're not, uh, like, there's... No, I don't think it's okay to just be like, well, I did if I didn't mean to do it, then it's all hunky-dory. Well, there's... Well, there's... you know what's an... Ex Okay, go on. Th go there's, on. I mean, there's obvious exceptions. Like if you fucking like brutally murder somebody like with your car, it's like, oh, I didn't mean to do it. I should just be able to go home. You know, like yeah. there's, there's, there's let's degrees of stuff, but like just as a general guideline, like you're trying to do, you're trying to do the best that you can without intentionally or maliciously hurting other people. I feel like a good kind of general standard to I, live your life. I, 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 I mean, agree. I, agree I agree in so far as you can't, you can't really actively try. Like, 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 if it's unintentional, it's unintentional. Like, you can't, you can't set out to do less unintentional harm because the unintentional harm is outside right, your control. Right. And yet, like, unintentional harm is still just as bad as intentional harm. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's worth any, I don't think it's any worse to do something intentionally bad than to do it unintentionally well, in the I, grand I, scheme I, of things. I, I ben, the reason that the... that's incorrect is because when people do things intentionally wrong, that creates a pattern of behavior that you can use to determine what their actions are likely to be in the future. Well, so I, you can say that they are both equally damaging to the world, but you, you do know when something is intentional versus unintentional that, you know, that person is likely to continue this kind of action, whereas if it was intentional, sure. that's I think, not the I case. I think intentional, you know? it, it, despite the effects being the same, I think intentional is always worse uh, for you like if i'm talking more like a code of conduct and less for like uh you know uh physical ramifications on the rest of you know the world um mm -hmm. and that's where i think that distinction becomes important like there's a to go yeah. back to the to, to the job example there's a difference between me going in for an interview and then you going in for an interview and you winning out over me like that was you just being the better candidate or whatever that's unintentional harm but if like we talked on the train and we were both going for the same job and you fucking made sure that uh, I didn't get off the train at the right time so I missed my interview and you got the job by default. That's intentional harm. Yeah, see, so like, different. you know that that uh, guy is a bad I'm, dude, right? You just, you know, if he's done that, we're aware you know, that this is a shady person and we don't I'm, want them doing I'm, that. I'm pretty confused because... I've never seen a cow go into a job interview. Right. Well, I'm we're talking, talking about we're, we're kind of moving away from animal <laughs> rights. Haven't you, know, you read the Far my, Side? My haven't you read the Far Side, dude? Come on. Oh yeah, you're I, right. On, on belly the washers. The drink subject, was called belly washers. On the subject <laughs> of <laughs> meat, I I want to say something like like some people will say some people will be like, yeah, I know it's bad that the cow gets killed for this meat, but like the cow's already dead, so like it's not bad if I eat it. That's and, so stupid. And I don't agree That's with so that stupid. because it's like no. supply and demand, right? Because right. like if you're right. if you're buying right. the meat, you're contributing to the demand, and you're you're and you're indirectly, but you're still like in, like supporting this system. For sure. I mean, whatever. that's why I don't do it. Like, it that's, is, yeah. it is basic, kind of like, you know, in, yeah, in terms yeah. of like practicality, it's like, yeah, like you're, you're the deed's already done, and you're just kind of consuming yeah. flesh. But at the same time, again, you're contributing to the system. You're, and, you're, you're leading my, to it happening more. My mindset that's is right. that that's I want, right. to, like, if I was doing that myself, I would be uncomfortable with it, and therefore I don't participate. But it gets a little more complicated, to me at least, when you mm -hmm. think about the fact that the cows that are being slaughtered for this meat are being bred specifically for that purpose. So, like, so it's their not... life wouldn't even exist without this demand, right? Yeah, okay. so in wouldn't a it... sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so that's where I get a little. Oh man. Well, it's I too, still it's there's, too there's still, dude. They're still that's a living creature, to... and they're still feeling pain. And I well, would. Well, like, would... what, yeah, what is it, what is a net? But are we talking about that? That's when it gets tough. Like, how do you measure like goodness? Do you judge it by net like 
life enjoyed by all creatures on the planet because by that we definition every baby that we do not have like just everyone should be out fucking all the time to produce more humans to have more enjoyment you don't we're trying measure to maximize it, that that's not a thing that no, you do you <laughs> don't measure it but, but i'm talking about systems but if you're trying do. but if you're i mean if you're trying to come up with like a schema of like what right, is good right. and like what is the what is a, a world worth pursuing i thought we were talking then about cows though these are all relevant questions. These are can all we, relevant. All right. Nate keeps taking it these. Keep, keep it to cows. Keep it to cows. Talk about what could be good or about cows. Okay, okay. I think, it's, Nate's, it's baby, I think Nate's baby example is germane. Well, it doesn't matter because it also applies to cows. Oh, wait. Germane means good. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, 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 so, right. Okay, so just to apply it to cows, is it, if we got two cows and, you know, you, you, you don't eat meat, so you just let them live out their lives and, you know, they, they die. Let's say they don't have kids or whatever. Uh, then that's that's fine. But if you are a meat farmer and you take those two cows and you breed them and you make a whole fucking fleet of cows, you know, in, by the end. And so let's say you've got like a thousand cows now. Uh, right. But after, you know, what, what like, how long does a cow live? Let's say after like five years, uh, you slaughter them and kill them. Maybe that's a lot shorter. I, I don't know. But you, you slaughter them and you kill them. And let's say you do it in a generally humane way, not like torturing them with like the like the Jews love to do. Um, and, uh, and you know, you kill them and you eat them and you sell it and whatever. So in that equation, the one guy had like two cows and they had a great life. You lived with them. They were like your pets. They were your buddies. And then they died as opposed to a world where you've got now a thousand cows who all had pretty good lives, but they did end violently as they were killed. Uh, so like which okay. of those is a happier situation for uh, the world? I, I mean, well, I'm not, I'm not well, talking for the about world, the world. I think it's I'm happier because now people have things to eat. Well, let's just focus on the cows' lives. Just, well, just if we're focusing just, just the on the cows' lives, it's definitely the first situation. I don't why? know, man. No, I, I think I think there's something like if if a well, thousand if, I... a, if a thousand cows live okay lives versus two mm -hmm. cows living okay. good lives. I mean, right. maybe maybe the thousand had, well, had why, more why combined this, good. We're was... talking. We're talking about. I, I don't think. I, I guess maybe my differentiation here is like I don't think. Um, I, I don't think quantity has anything to do with it. Uh, yeah, why would the that's why would you're thousand cows well, that, that, that can't, that can't right, be true me, because benefiting why, two people is better than benefiting one, isn't it? Can uh, I just on, say let, why? Let why? We're talking about why? The quality why? Of the life. God fucking damn it! Can I say <laughs> what I want to say? Jesus let the man Christ! Speak. Why would one thousand cows live worse lives than just two? Why was? Why is that part be, of it? Be, no, it's We're, just because we kill them at the end. We kill them for meat after several. Is years. that it? That's why. Yeah, that's it. That, in this what, in this example, that's the only difference. I thought dying of old age is also painful. It probably is. It probably is. Then then what's the difference? Well, you could say the time that was lived between the two. Like those two had a higher quality life overall. They lived, let's say, ten years. This and then is they died like a hypothetical causes. scenario we're laying. No, this is totally oh. applicable to real life. Well, like, never we're mind talking that. about how we should treat I, animals. I, well, okay. Why why is it okay to arbitrarily kill something? Uh, after it's been deemed by someone else that their their function has been served, now they're going to keep going. Well, like, you could argue that it isn't. Well, uh, I don't because I I don't care about cows' lives. So that's you know that's my position. Well, I but mean, you do. Obviously. I do. So I I think that's kind of ridiculous. It's like saying like oh like you know what if what if the state took care of me and my family and I had like seven kids, but like once I turned forty they fucking killed me and used okay, my body but, but, for medical but, but, purposes. But like, just to Ben's point, Ben was just making a, a question about, you know, what which of those is a better world? Which world has produced more joy? You know, the fact well, that if you know, all the cows, cows had a yeah. decent life, then by virtue of the more cows having more of a good life, if they all add up to something gooder. Well, well like, I don't know how you're measuring about, this. We're talking about we're talking about a thousand cows whose lives is like not great, but like it's just good enough that like it's right. not terrible. Right. Like, right. It's, well, like it's it, just I mean, but, 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 but it's just worth living versus one cow that had like yeah this cow had a good yeah. ass life. Well, you know why? what I mean? Why is that? What do you mean why? why? Is this the is the hypothetical no, 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 that I'm no. laying out. Okay, that, all right, fine. That's the hypothetical. I thought it was a different hypothetical, but if that's the hypothetical, I would say. Um, I mean, that's stacked in favor of the two cows having a great life. But I'm just saying, if there's I two think, cows and I they think... die of old age, and if you have a thousand cows that get killed, if they still have a decent life, mm -hmm. like, there's there's no... It's better to have more cows because there's more meat, and that in impacts more people than two cows that don't give any meat. Even if the cow... Sure. If, and if we're talking about just the cows, well, you... I don't think it makes too much of a difference... If there's a thousand cows or two cows, unless you explicitly say that the two cows have a much better life, well, which is why I, I think it's a weird hypothetical. But there's only one answer to that. Of course, the, it's the two cows. The, uh, all I right. To, to me, to me, it seems obvious that a thousand cows 
that like like from some, from like a logical standpoint, a thousand cows living mediocre lives is probably more happiness overall than mm-hmm. one or two cows living real good lives. But hey, that's just a theory, a <laughs> game theory. Thanks well, I for I think, watching. I think by from that you know sense of logic, I think you know we should be making as many people as possible, making as many cows right, yeah. as possible. That's but the logical application. That you of that. could also say that because all those cows die, and that's sad, that we should have no cows. We should have no people. We should have absolutely nothing because then there'll be well, no sadness in the world. There'll be no pain. There'll be no death. It just, to, it's just, it, I don't mm-hmm. see how hey, any of this fits together. I'm getting really, think you're really heated something. right now. To go, to go back to my my orig- original point, which is what I guess we were trying to talk about, is like I was, I'm, I'm thinking more along the terms of not not enabling happiness because I don't think there's any way to to like guarantee happiness. I think. At least right. for human beings, uh, you know that's that's up to you. Like you can only like set up potential for happiness, but like it's your own actions that determine whether you're happy or not. The 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 what I was the kind of philosophy I follow is about avoiding causing pain and by that extension avoiding suffering. And so I think Tom, if you can have... I can I challenge your philosophy with uh, yeah, another yeah, question? Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to discuss. Go. So. Plants and fish are very similar in that neither feel pain, and you have to kill both of them to eat them. So why do you not eat fish? Um, you know, I I've asked myself that question. I guess I guess I think it's because it goes that that's much more of just like a personal discomfort because they okay. they're still alive, and I didn't wouldn't want to deny something. But isn't life. a plant alive too? It I is. think it's just and I think that, it's just that fish have eyes, and we and I've have taken eyes. I've I've, yeah, I've thought about that a lot because it's like okay, by that same philosophy, it is still hypocritical to have plants. You'd have to subsist basically on nothing but is, like nuts and berries, essentially. Is that what the nuts only have thing lives? That's, that's nuts have potential for lives. <laughs> and and as yeah. Son- and as Sonichu discovered after he evolved with his new body, <laughs> nuts and apples just won't cut it. Um, <laughs> wait, is, is that true though? Do, do fish not feel pain? How do we know no, they, that? They, they, I've heard that. I've yeah, heard they don't that. feel pain because they're not think... smart enough to feel pain. I just read it. Well, let's let's just assume that that's true. I mean, I'm pretty sure it is. I've, but I've I think, heard it before well, as well. It's either a very popular myth or there's some science somewhere. Personally, even, even if we put in a hypothetical animal that's like that, though, we could still, you know. Try. I mean, I personally, the fact that fish don't feel pain. Say, if I was vegan or vegetarian. I would still not eat fish just because of that emotional right that's attachment why. because they have right. eyes and a mouth and I'm like oh that's a it's a it's a guy it's a person I can I can very easily anthropomorphize a fish it's very difficult to anthropomorphize a, a plant without making it you know an animal with plant like qualities right because and you know, like, so at the just, end of just, the day this philosophy mm-hmm. like completely kind of comes into conflict with just like the structure of like how life on this planet works because sure. like sure. it's all designed to like kind of like like we're we're the entire you planet got is basically one like macro organism and we're all parts of it and that means we all mm-hmm. are interdependent. Mm-hmm. So you can only resist this to a certain degree unless you just want to kind of give up yourself and die and then kind of go back into the soil <laughs> yeah, and yeah. become fuel for something else. So like it's inherently you know, the flawed. ultimate act of vegetarianism right, is exactly. suicide. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's, yeah. it's it's not even like a joke when you really get fucking like like super deep into it which is why like i don't go out and like evangelize it or try and like make a big deal out of it because like to do it is like a definitely an act of hypocrisy to to a degree like the farther you go down that that path well, you know tom tom it sounds to me like what you're saying is sort of at the logical end of vegetarianism lies you know this this sort of rejection of the systems that keep human beings alive right or you know allows to a and, certain you know, degree uh, that's that's but possibly true uh, along the vegetarian lifestyle. I would just I would challenge the vegetarian uh, ideology at its core because I think that and then my whole argument at the beginning of this podcast was that I w- was a challenge to why they think the way they do and why I don't think that it is necessary to concern ourselves with the lives of animals at least to the extent that vegetarians do or or vegans like, or those guys who take like, it to that extreme. Like living itself is kind of a selfish thing to do because to keep yourself alive you have to consume mm-hmm. resources and like 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 you know if you get a job someone else doesn't get that job right. and all that and right. like it's right. a, it's a it's a That's bitter just... it, it's a bitter struggle for resources and and position and status and money and and sex and and all that stuff and uh like yeah so that's that's why i really think that if you don't it, you have to if you're not if you don't like to live at all is to put is to look out for number one above all else and like if you don't acknowledge that, I really think you're just kidding yourself. You know, Ben, not not to not to suck my own dick too hard, okay. but I think the only I think the only difference between the, our two positions here is that we we both accept that living is a is a fairly selfish thing to do in general, yeah. and that you know you consume. So we agree on that. 
Uh, but you seem to be okay at pretty much leaving it at that, whereas I, I am interested in, in continuing on to, to try to to investigate the ideal situation where we're causing the least harm possible. I That's am, what I'm interested in finding I am out. totally content with leaving it at that. There you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that, was, that was pretty juicy. Twitter Anyone got any questions. more points to make? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll pull them up. But anybody got any 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 more points to make? I think frogs should take over as the main species on Earth. I don't like <laughs> humans. We have stupid podcasts that suck, and they <laughs> they really they really <laughs> shot themselves in the foot by a, making those. A frog never made a shitty. <laughs> I think podcast. me and Tom need to go out to dinner, and he needs to like prepare me the greatest vegetarian meal of all time so I can there see There are no good vegetarian good. meals. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. then oh, fuck you know, Tom, Tom is good. Tom accepts I, that the vegetarian lifestyle I was, is shit, but he I does it anyway. <laughs> I was almost sold, but... Uh... <laughs> that's, that's the weird thing. I, I know some good vegetarian things. Like actually, I, I like there a lot are, of vegetarian there, there are good vegetarian foods. meals. I'm just a terrible vegetarian. Oh, totally. I actually, oh, well, I actually, yeah, like, yeah. I actually like tofu. I you know, the I, thing... It's very hit or miss for me. I didn't yeah. even bring this up at all, but I actually would love to be a vegetarian specifically for the uh, the nutritional benefits. Like, you, if you're a vegetarian, you will not be fat. You just won't be fat. It's not going to happen. Because you're starving to death. Unless, unless, you're, like, <laughs> uh, unless you're like a That's, shitty one. No, Maybe come vegan. on. You, Maybe, okay, you know, you vegan. Can eat, you, vegan can is more high, you, can, you can eat high fructose corn syrup as a, right, as a vegetarian. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right. revising here, that. Here, I should have said here's vegan. Here's the thing you can do for a vegetarian uh, meal. You get a bunch of vegetables and some olive oil, and you put it all in a pan. You just chop it up a bit, onions, uh, peppers, uh, asparagus, mm -hmm. all sorts of things. You put them in a pan, and you just roast it. You roast that for like an hour or so, and it's Yo, just great. Yo, hypocrite sucks. Roast it. There you go. <laughs> but Bam. that just sounds like Got a side it. dish. Like, I'd still be hungry for the No, no, course. it's a big, it's a big deal because of the olive oil. It's like, oh, Dude, just yeah. get, uh, Chili yeah. and olive oil and garlic and, and pepper and, and all that. Have you ever had, some like... Chicken. <laughs> Haven't you ever had like a like a vegetarian noodles at like a Chinese place with delicious sauce? It's it's purely vegetarian, but it's fucking delicious and it's like a, a big ass entree type meal. I love those. Those are totally yeah, vegetarian pas and pasta, totally good. Pasta pasta noodle dishes with vegetables are great. Nate, the only food I eat is fried chicken. Mm, now you're speaking <laughs> you're well my your language. <laughs> <laughs> Would you? Okay. Uh, my right, my, my Snapchat you... is like half just like videos of me frying shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you ever like? eaten just the fried part of like the skin like oh the, the all the of fucking course, time of i peel it off yeah. first maybe, and eat it yeah yeah maybe that's the only good bit maybe you should just eat uh, that no. part yeah but I don't, <laughs> they don't have extra diet yeah I'm, I'm a vegetarian i buy chicken wings and i cook them but i only eat the skin and i throw the rest to my dogs <laughs> yeah <laughs> makes perfect sense you know it so just i just it just, it just you know, i just feel more comfortable that way <laughs> okay let's let's answer some of these questions here okay here we go uh uh, uh at T Bob eight zero six asks, "How do you guys deal with stress?" Oh fuck! <laughs> is there is stress there really any good me. way to deal with stress? I don't know it if, uh, if there is. Uh, the main way I deal with stress is to not worry about people seeing me get angry. Because <laughs> if you worry about that's that, that's just an extra layer. Uh, an extra layer. Being embarrassed about your feelings is retarded. I know how Gib deals with stress, though. Gib uh, goes into Dark Souls and kills an NPC. That's yes. how he lets off steam. <laughs> it's my, true. I like that system a lot. My reaction, my reaction to stress is to like shut down and go catatonic and not do anything. <laughs> I'm uh, imagining my, Ben lying on the floor motionless. It's the stress. The stress. Uh, ba well, yeah, basically, it's just like... Does it work? Well, no, 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 that's not, <laughs> that's not my coping mechanism. Like, that's that's my natural reaction. Like, not lying on the floor, mm -hmm. but it's me, like, sitting at my computer, just, like, staring at a screen, just, like, picking at my hair or something, like, and yeah. it's just for, like, hours. Like, that's, like, that's my stress reaction. The best, the best coping mechanism that I have with it is to fight through it and, and do something anyway, and usually that makes me feel better. But, of course... Yeah, e easier said than done a lot of the uh, time. A accomplishing one of the things on your task list when you're stressed is, is yes. I think, the best way to yeah, like, you make, pick the smallest it's one. It's also Try the most difficult it. thing to do. I, I, it's yeah. really hard. Yeah, that's because you're, you're least why, motivated. It, yep. it's, it's why yep. you need to have a bunch of shitty projects that doesn't that don't matter. Like, yeah. like, yeah. like I have with the the Vriska drawings. Like <laughs> I'm still doing. If I get to if the I, end... if I can't think of anything to do, I do that and I feel okay. If I get to the end of a day and I feel like I haven't accomplished anything, I'll like make a t-shirt <laughs> and that and like that and that'll be like oh i did i did something today uh okay let's uh, what do we got here how about uh at based animan says 
Wait, no, that's a terrible question. Never mind. Okay, here's a better one. Uh, <laughs> at our hero, our, our good friend, HGB guy, asks, okay, asks this incredible question. You may only choose one chicken or tea. That's, chicken. That's your question. Oh, right, what? chicken. <laughs> well, I'd be, I have to choose I, tea by default, so. I would be really yeah, sad to lose either one. Oh, yeah, actually. You know, cause, well, I can have coffees. So who cares? Tea, uh, chicken. I, yeah. my, my, my gut reaction is that I'd really miss chicken, but on the other mm -hmm. hand, like, other meats are good as well, Actually, whereas yeah. there's really no good mm. substitute for tea. Ben. You're right. Ben, yeah. can you make chicken nuggets out of a different animal? Actually, yeah, you can make yeah, chicken yeah, can. tendies can. out of Ac a different animal. Actually, can you make actually, buffalo wild wings out of actually, a different animal? Actually, I just yesterday watched a video of a, of of Chef John from FoodWishes.com preparing what he <laughs> called city chicken, which is just pork arranged to look like a chicken wing, and uh, supposedly it's pretty good. Hmm. So maybe I, I guess I guess I would give up chicken actually. Now that you said oh, all that. Oh fuck you! <laughs> I I like pork because I'm kicking it's you guys illegal. out of the chicken nuggets uh, fan club. Oh that no! We started on the PC PC. I yeah. would definitely give up tea. The, the I like one... tea, but I don't Speaking need it. Speaking of chicken nuggets, you hear about the guy who got the year of free nuggets from Wendy's? It actually yeah. That's... Did he get all those tweets? Did he get all the retweets? No, they he didn't. They he gave did it to him anyway. He, he has the most. Oh really? They did. He didn't get 18 million, but he has. I think it got to like four million or something. It's the most retweeted tweet of all time. So Wendy's I was just was like, curious. That's enough. There you go. We did go. did he have that shit. agreement ahead of time, or like, what was the arrangement here? Did he just he, tweet like, "Hey, if I get a million tweets, will no, I get?" No. What he did is he he tweeted yeah. at Wendy's and said, "How many retweets do I need to get a, a year's supply of free nuggets?" And they responded, mm -hmm. 18 million. So he <laughs> quoted that and said, "Help a nigga out. I need my nugs." Yeah. And he got like four and a half million tweets, and it was the most retweeted tweet of all time. So Wendy's is like you know what we'll, you, we'll give it to you that's fucking great that's uh, the fantastic. most retweeted tweet of all time that's, that that's almost incredible. makes up for the for the porn <laughs> the wendy's porn yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> wait i feel like i feel like i was gonna say oh yeah the, the one misgiving the, the one last misgiving i have about giving up chicken is that chicken breast is like the cheapest meat like all other meats are that, more yeah. expensive mm -hmm. than chicken so that's that's what would make me sad about giving up chicken i i, I'm I still feel like fence. a lot of the time fried chicken it's it's mostly in the batter and i can i can i can i can i can do it with other meat i probably oh, could man, there's so nothing many beats chicken nuggets with uh with buffalo sauce baby you can't beat it I might, some of that I might give honey up tea. mustard sauce. I might have to I give can up eat. tea you got to give up tea you got to give up tea who gives a fuck about tea yeah. Yeah, I, I drink tea like I drink tea every day, and even I know chicken. I mean, how are you gonna bulk without chicken? Come on, I, come on. I I, I, chi <laughs> I enjoy chicken more often than I enjoy tea. I should give up the tea. Oh, that's that's right. Right. There are so that's many right. drinks right. better than tea. I like it. I like, I like how you guys are all paying so many... to do this, but I've already done this and given up chicken. It's pretty. There's so that's many true. That's there's true. so many different <laughs> kinds of tea. Mm. So many different mm. kinds of chicken. I think. I think. I could. I could. I could probably, if I wanted to, give up meat entirely. It I don't wasn't that hard. To, I, did it, I, I did it in one day. Just one day, I just decided Jesus and just stopped. Jesus Christ! Yeah. How long? How long you been a a veg man? Uh, <laughs> I think seven years now. Seven years. Holy now, shit. Tom, this is an important question I forgot to ask. Yeah. As a vegetarian, do you still eat pussy? Uh, <laughs> you know. I, that is my one flaw, I suppose. I still do that. <laughs> on, on the rare occasions, I'm allowed. You <laughs> hypocrite. <laughs> hey, okay. Here, here's another question. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you think vegetarian women still swallow cum? Uh, they, yes. They yes. better. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, if, if, a, if, a, if a cow could talk and would say, like, yeah, take my milk, you know, go for it, no problem. Swallow Same my shit. cum, Nobody would care. dude. Swallow my cum, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, cow here we go. say that. At Jer Gerard says, uh, what is the ideal breakfast of champions? Especially excited to hear a hypocrite and his take on English breakfast. Ooh, also, wait, his name what? is Toasty what? Boy. <laughs> what, what, is the breakfast of champions in reference to anything? Or is it, it just, means saying, like a, just means like just the like, best what's breakfast. What's your favorite breakfast? That was the slogan yeah. for Wheaties for a while. Right, mm. that's true. Wheaties I mean, is not involved I, in my breakfast of champions. I occasionally have uh, an English breakfast with, with, uh, with tomatoes and, and onion and... Uh, and mushrooms and, and toast mm. and, and bacon and Whoa, sausages and stuff. I'm into that. And beans. I'm it's, into it's that It's all shit. it's all nice and greasy and cool. But I don't have it every day because it's a lot of stuff to do. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I mean English breakfast is is my favorite. I don't. So, yeah. I don't know if this. Yeah, English breakfast is good. Every breakfast I, you eat is an English breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this is the best. Well, 
Nate, I have two breakfast stories. W- one uh-huh. uh, is okay. We we went one year to like Connecticut or something, and we stayed at this sure. like weirdly fancy hotel. Remember that? Like we got we were in this like hotel mm. that was like really fancy for some reason. I think I do remember that. Yeah, and didn't we? Have, there was like a sky bridge over to the event or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and there was like a big like painted mural in the ceiling of the the foyer or whatever. Anyway, mm-hmm. they, it was advertised that there was free breakfast, like free continental breakfast, meaning like you know some fucking danishes and coffee yeah, and yeah. like a little a little like like sealed pouch of cereal or whatever. But I went to like this other room by accident. It was like a restaurant in the thing, and I ordered and I ordered lobster eggs Benedict, thinking that Jesus it was Christ. Uh, yeah, thinking that yeah, this I remember was the, that <laughs> thinking that this was the free breakfast, and they gave it to me. <laughs> Uh, and then they were like, yeah, $35. And I was like, I'm just a kid. I'm, I don't have any money. And then like, I don't know. They like, I went, I went and got mom or something. And like, she was like, I think they gave it to me for free because like I was a kid. Yeah. That's nice. So that was one of the best breakfasts I ever had. The other one. Okay. The other day, a couple days before I left DigiHouse, we went out to Waffle House together and I discovered a fucking incredible loophole because Waffle House is kind of pr- <laughs> is kind of pricey for what it is, right? Like the Shit. food's not great. They're pretty shitty. Yeah, it, it's kind of shitty and it's not that cheap. But mm-hmm. you can like hash browns are like a dollar seventy five, and a triple serving of hash browns is like less than three times. It's like three dollars, and you can get mm-hmm. a topping for like fifty cents a piece. And one of the toppings is sausage gravy. So get. Go to Waffle mm. House, get a triple hash browns with sausage gravy, and it is a huge fucking bowl of hash brown smothered in like ladles full of sausage gravy. It, I, I was stuffed, and it cost me like three seventy five. That sounds Holy amazing. Shit. It was amazing. Everyone try it. Go and that, rip off. That your, that's a Ben good. Saint hack right there. Go, go and rip <laughs> off your local Waffle House. By the way, I fucking <laughs> love sausage gravy, and I hate that they don't eat it above the Mason Dixon line. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do. I, I, like, never had it. I had it, like, once in my whole life until I was, like, well, an adult. Well, you know, we grew up in fucking Massachusetts. So then yeah, you, you know. in Iowa, every gas station would have uh, biscuits and gravy available to eat, and they had sausage gravy. Oh, oh, I, they I, don't, I they don't have it around I, Boston. Yeah, biscuits and gravy was not a thing around Boston. Yeah. Huh. You could you could get you could get it at like KFC, but not like sausage gravy. They'd have like like brown. It was shitty. Gravy. It was like, the shitty like yeah, brown mashed gravy. potato gravy. Yeah, yeah. I, I remembered my actual favorite uh, breakfast I ever had. Yeah, it sounds weird, but it's it's cold uh, salmon, like cold salmon fish bit, uh, with uh, with uh, scrambled eggs, but mm. put in the microwave, like that, not like uh, mm. it, it's it's very strange, but it, it it's it's really nice, like cold salmon and and, and hot microwave scrambled eggs. Delicious. If that, you if you have that, that reminds me it. of another breakfast favorite, but it also works good for brunch or lunch, which is a bagel with cream cheese. Capers, onions, tomato slices, and thin sliced smoked salmon. It is or the lox a lox bagel is one of my, is one of my other favorite breakfasts. But you got to have the capers. The capers really make the meal. Trust. I want to hear what you guys think of this one for the breakfast of a true champion. You sleep in until noon and then you mm. eat lunch. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say I don't one. have breakfast. I intermittent fast, but I also sleep. I have all day, breakfast, so yeah. regardless of it. when I wake up. Wait, that's not the dietary intermittent fasting of like the professional bodybuilders use and shit. Is that that's not what you're talking about? I'm assuming. Uh, I eat for an eight-hour period. And I fast for sixteen on the daily. That's, and do you do this? Do you do this for like the weight that's loss? Intermittent benefits? fasting. Uh, I, I that's how I heard about it, but I just do it because hmm. like fuck, why not? It's easy. I okay. kind of do the same cool. thing where I'll, I'll eat for 16 hours and then for 8 hours I won't. Ah, that's, 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 that's... Are you talking about 18 like hours, a, a 16 <laughs> hours straight? Like, like that's a big meal. Yeah. No, no, just like, you know, every now and then I'll, like, sometimes I eat breakfast and lunch and dinner, like, these random little meals throughout the day, and then 8 hours, no eating at all. I don't, I don't understand I, what you're talking about. He's saying that he's, I, he's, he's saying eats he's throughout the day and then, go, and then goes to sleep, yeah. Um, <laughs> that sounds I preposterous. Fast when How I'm could asleep. a man do that? It's a fucking joke. Tyrone... Tyrone no, likes to pyramid his meals, meaning each meal is bigger <laughs> than the last. I met Tyrone's dad the other day. It was a short Mexican guy. Tyrone's six foot ten, three hundred pounds. <laughs> what? It's, that's from Donkey. Uh, some some Donkey for you. Oh. Here, here's a question. Here's a question. At Vivian Classic Flamer. Donkey. At Vivian Flamer asks, "Will you validate me by answering my humorous question that leaves little room for discussion towards the end of your podcast, please?" No. Moving on. Uh, next question. <laughs> Got him. At anime, animedicated, yeah, animedicated. People have weird names. Animedicated. Uh, 
maybe it is animedicated. Oh, yeah, that's probably it. Animedicated. Oh, you got it. Okay, good job. Um, have you ever had any paranormal or otherwise inexplicable experiences? Yes. Ghost. No. What? Ghost. Sorry, I... Ghost. I ghost? am a ghost. Yeah, you ever you ever had a par- you, ever... you ever had a paranormal thing happen to you? Um, or just an inexplicable. Period. I went to Pokemon Hell. Yeah. Oh shit! <laughs> How was it? But it, it was hot. Yeah, <laughs> it hurts I a lot. Left. It hurts a lot. Trust me. I had a ghost. I, I yeah. had a, I had a ghost. But yeah, yeah. So my college was real gay, but um. One of the things, it, it was like, I guess it was like, it was like the most haunted college in New Jersey or it had some shitty little claim to fame like that. Lol. There okay. there were a couple of like local ghosts in different buildings, whatever. Um, and like when I first got there as a freshman, they had like a, a, a thing. It was like a, there was like a raffle to see who got to go on this like ghost tour where like a tour guide would go around mm-hmm. and talk about the ghosts. And like. Oh my god, this is a fucking tale. We we we, <laughs> we we went around to different places. Oh, this is the ghost that supposedly he is here. Da 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 da. And we went up to like the top of this like administrative building that I had like not really that is not like a normal place to go. And we were standing up in this kind of like 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 conference room with like windows and stuff. And she she's talking about the ghost. He's talking about whatever like ghost of like a woman or something who died or something. And there's a lightning flash or some no, someone takes a picture in a camera. And I swear to god, it reflected in the window in this room, I see the the image of an old man in a poncho standing next to a little boy. And I'm like, "Huh. That looks an awful lot like a ghost." And I was like, "Hey, excuse me, tour guy. I think I just saw a ghost in the mirror." Uh, I saw the ghostly image of an old man in a poncho standing with a little boy, and he was like, "Oh no, that's not the ghost that lives here." And I was like, "Okay, never mind. Don't don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine." Um, and then and then some fucking goth chick was like, "Ugh!" and like like got all spooked, and she was sitting on a radiator, and she was like, "Ugh!" and she kind of made a scene about it, and the the tour guide was like, "Oh, what is it?" and she was like, "Oh, I felt something." But you know, I'm very receptive to the spirits. You know, I talk to oh! ghosts. I talk to ghosts all the time. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then yeah, and then she went on this big stupid thing about her retarded beliefs or whatever. Was it not because she sat on a hot radiator and she went ah? <laughs> she fucking she faked the whole goddamn thing for attention. That okay, son of a bitch. I, I need to ask. So, how convinced are you that what you experienced there was a paranormal event? Zero, zero percent. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had a real one. If you want to hear my real paranormal event, sure, sure, sure. So one time, uh, me and my buddies, we went to Red Lobster, and you know, like they, for some reason, all these fucking places, you know, you order crab legs or lobster, they don't, they don't mm-hmm. take the meat out for you. They're like, here, here, here's a twenty-five dollar chore for you. Have fun. So right. I got I yeah, got all I the meat that. out of my lobster and I had this shell sitting over there and it started shaking around a bit and I think there was a ghost in the shell. Wow. Good one. <laughs> Fuck all of you. Very, very <laughs> you laugh at Ben's gay bullshit that joke, that and not my hilarious meme. You just put the words of a thing that everyone knows <laughs> it was, in a it goddamn... Was, it was just it was all just a shaggy dog story. <laughs> Uh, no, that's not, I'm starting that's my not new true. podcast. I'm starting the Prolapse and the Gators <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, hey, here's a question that's nothing purely but puns. A, this is a purely a vanity question. Uh, uh, Faku at Fakukaboka. God damn it! I don't know. Whatever. Fakukaboka asks, "How do you like your steak?" And I'm only answering this because I just had the best steak of my whole life uh, two weeks ago. At this, my parents came to visit in Cincinnati, and we went to this place called the Precinct for the first time in my life. They wanted to go to a fancy restaurant, so I, I got this this reservation at the place. I never believed there was such a thing as a good restaurant. I assumed everything mm-hmm. was McDonald's quality or worse. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, and I, I got to this place, and we had this. It, it's famous for its steaks. It's like a Cincinnati famous restaurant. And um, had the fucking steak, and it was just the literally the best meal I've ever had in my entire life. And it was, I believe, medium. No, it was medium rare. Yeah, it was medium I think, rare. So I think medium, medium rare. rare is is the way to go with steak. It yeah. was it was pink and juicy and so fucking succulent. Yeah, God, everyone go to the precinct. Uh, it's I the best. Yeah. I medium just rare, definitely. It, it's not a steak, but I just went to a place called Moxie Burger yesterday, which I'd never been to mm. before, and ordered the the classic Moxie Burger, which is a it's a burger medium rare with bacon, 
the like a cheese sauce, some other like spicy aioli sauce on it or something, and a fried green tomato. And wow. uh, I'd never had a fried green tomato before. It kind of tasted like a pickle. Anyway, it was super good. And medium rare. Sick. Medium medium rare is the point. Oh, I just I just thought of a cool thing to say. This a, this could be a hashtag. Um, uh, liking well done steak is the equivalent of liking Dark Souls two. That's <laughs> that's the comparison. I thought it was just shit, quite apt because people shit taste. people it's garbage. Yeah, yeah. No people. Can, it's it's mostly because people have come out and said, you know, I think well done steak is the best, and I'm like, Idiots. well, it isn't. You just like it. <laughs> So you're you're dumb. I agree. Okay, here we go. Here's... Hideki Kamiya said that as a boy he would eat steak, but his but his but he would eat American steak. Only he couldn't understand all the words, like he couldn't fully appreciate the taste of the American steak, which inspired mm. him. To, which inspired him to make his own steak as an adult and like deliberately leave out some of like the key ingredients, so that the, the so that the player of the steak had to like piece the story together in their own minds. But you, you said know? Hideki Kamiya. What you mean is Hidetaki Miyazaki? I m- fuck. I meant Hideki <laughs> Miyazaki. <laughs> Uh, I was quite lost there. Yep, fuck I me. I got it now. Sorry, Wait, did I miss his first name? Whatever, who cares? It's Miyazaki. Uh, okay, here's uh, here's another question. Uh, okay, this is a, this is one I've been mulling over in my mind for a long time. At Mostafa was here asks, is it gay to fap with friends? Yes, is God. It? Yes. I don't know. I'm not prepared to condemn it to gay All right. that quickly. Get out of here, you there fucking are situa- gay. There are situations. How what do you mean there are gay? situations? There are no if, you're, situations. if you're back to back. If you're what? back to back, <laughs> it's not gay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> not gay. But why? Wait, if you're back to back, like, like, if you're like, not why? gay, you're still a fag. Just go to the fucking <laughs> next door. Well, I, just go home. Go home. Would you be like, would you be like, like, like two of you, like backed into it, like, like back to back, like fighting off waves of zombies, like jizzing all over them? That's no, right. All, this is the, the only weapon you have. Heard. That would, yeah, that'd be okay. Look, there was yeah. a, uh, this. This isn't. This isn't oh, actually no. like the full fap story. But it's like oh, when I was no. a little boy, oh, well, my no. my friend showed me <laughs> yeah. showed oh, me some showed hardcore dick porn. And now you're gay. You guys, you guys all know a uh, Heather Brook, right? The the famous deep throat artist. She's a goddess. Uh, mm. and and she was my friend showed me that, and I I didn't jack off with them, but I went to the next room and I jacked off, and what I just feel fuck? totally vindicated for that that whole event, and I don't feel there was a shred of gayness in the whole thing. Uh, if anyone is gay, it's them for giving me a boner. That's gay to bring one, up uh, porn when around time, your friends. One time, one time as a youth, uh, me and a friend like mm-hmm. like went to the bathroom, and I like was peeing in the urinal, and I finished. And then for some <laughs> reason, I decided to like jerk off into the urinal, and I did it real fast. <laughs> Yeah, oh and like God, I, I was a little kid, and like I don't know, I th- like I thought it was cool. Like, I was like, hey, hey, I'm jerking off. And he's like, are you jerking off? I was like, yeah, I am, and I did. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Unlike Nate, I'm gonna sk- yeah, that was fucking gay and weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh One time God. at summer camp, a dude just pulled out his dick and showed it to me and said, like, dude, isn't this sick? And I was like. <laughs> Is it? Th- uh, I'm going to th- be sick. That's Isn't gay. this diseased? I don't <laughs> yeah. know, man. I don't know. Uh, Are you a doctor by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was trying to say. We, we live uh, in a mad world. We live in a mad world. Yeah, uh, a world okay. of possibilities. Personally, <laughs> I don't whether think... whether or not we're gay. I don't think there's anything <laughs> gay with jerking your dick while looking at a woman if your friend's next to you. Fuck it. I got to agree on that. I got to agree mm. on that. If well, you think jerking mm. off to a woman is gay, then you need to reevaluate if, if you can, your own if, sexuality. But why do you got to do it with your buddy there? Look, because we're watching can, the same porno, dude. Yeah. But that's weird, too. The thing about it is that the, 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 the proximity of the dicks and the, the awareness of both of you that there's some there's a there's a live dick somewhere right next to you. What if we're like, both going to glance at it? If you glance at it, if you think about it, then you're gay. No, what if we're But you got to examine... Well, if you're on a separate blanket, I mean, if you're under the same blanket, that's kind of just being gay with each other. Uh, but I mean, solo same activity. One. What is wrong with all of you? Think about the historical context, Tom. Come on, like, okay, first of all, first of, first of all, if you're, if you're double teaming, if you're double teaming a girl, that's basically like masturbating, only using a girl as yeah. a masturbation to tool. Yeah, so what's already up with that? right there. I'm still, already right there. I'm not, and I wouldn't, and I wouldn't do that sold either. On doing that, and he, yeah, I would. You guys well, think that devil threesome is gay? I don't, I, no, I don't know if think, I no, 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 I don't think it's gay. Far. I just I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be, That's what it's called. <laughs> that's what it. it. Uh, 
Uh, that's just funny. That is yeah. a funny term. Okay, but 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 also oh. consider even more apropos is the old uh, like nudie picture cinemas they used to have, where everyone would go in and and fucking Pee Wee yeah. Herman went and jerked off. That was a bunch of, yeah, but that's a bunch of strangers, and I assume they're not like next to each other. I assume they're okay. all like seated in seats. They have a little cubicle. Like, like the, the people at the top jizz on the people on the lowest. The it, it, it creates and it a just wave. That's, down that's, down. Called, that's, yeah. called, that's called trickle-down economics. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what if there's somebody at home who lives in a poor family and they have to share a bedroom with, like, their brother? Are they allowed right. to jerk off while their brother's in the room? You know, yes. desperate mm. times call for stealth situations. Yeah. I, I, I had no choice. But, 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 but stealth, stealth jerking off is different. Stealth yeah, jerking okay. off that's, that's is fair. totally different. We've all stealth but jerked off when did, Ben was in the, the room. Didn't the question just say, can you jerk <laughs> off with your friend in the room? Okay, okay. It, yeah, stealth jerk. I mean, if, I mean I'm, I'm imagining like you both got your dicks out, like right, conscious, right. and you're both like, yeah, we're jacked. You're the gay one <laughs> if your mind went straight to that shit. I guess, well, I've yeah, that's, always that's, that's said why, that I'm gay, I guess. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's, that's why I brought up like the whole like uh, awareness thing. Like, do yeah. they know that I'm doing it, or do, they, the, they do know. I know that they're they doing know. it? If, if both of yeah. you know that the other is doing it, then it's pretty gay. Mm. I disagree. <laughs> What if I, I'm not looking at his dick? I'm looking at the tits on the TV. Okay, you know what? I know, I know no, that, I but like, I wouldn't, just, I wouldn't say it's back gay. of your mind. It's not gay, it's gay, but it's stupid. I wouldn't do it. I would feel Let weird Let me ask you this. It. Is it gay to sword fight with your dicks? Is that no. gay? No. No? I don't I, I think <laughs> I think it not? very much depends. I think it depends on how you do it. What's not <laughs> you know? gay about oh that? It's only gay if your intention is to come from it. Yeah, I sort of agree. I sort of agree. Yeah, I guess. I can just play around. it's sexually... It's okay, just like because if a guy grabs your junk and just starts groping you, like you may in fact get a boner despite being totally heterosexual, sure. just from the physical stimulation. Yeah. To the same, yeah. to, in the same way, getting a boner in order to sword fight with a dude is totally not necessarily gay. But if the act excites you and the rubbing of the dicks against each other, if that excites you, that's gay. And th- and it just the, Wait, it can't be why? just the touching; it has to be you the just thought. Said that, well, like, yeah, yeah, you just, just, you just said that physical stimulation. Maybe, maybe I, Maybe I said it wrong. It, ben, I got a question if, if for you. If physical stimulation mm. is 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 not gay, then yeah. uh, then physical stimulation of two dicks uh, is gay. Yeah, it's no, not. No. It's, not, it's, gay. Good no, test. it's okay. not gay if it feels good, guys. That's right. <laughs> no, no, exactly right. Ben, I've got a test for you. Let's What's say okay. let's say your girlfriend wants a surprise. You, she says, "Here, Ben, I'm gonna blindfold you, give you a blowjob." So yeah. Then she does. Uh oh, it wasn't her. She had her brother do it. If you come in her brother's mouth and you think it was a chick, are you now gay? Well, <laughs> yes, no, for sure. No, no, of course not. No, no that's not gay. That's not gay at all. No, because when although, you, when although, you take... I, although I am although I am single now because my girlfriend is it's the intention. Is, is, is dead now. Um. <laughs> the the whole thing about about sexual orientation is that it's a preference. If it's if you don't know that it's a guy, then it's right. fine. Yeah. So yeah. you just wear it blindfold all the time. You can have as much and sex as you like. And then sword fight all you want. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, okay. We, we plumbed the depths <laughs> of that I feel, one. I feel like we've learned a lot today. <laughs> I agree. That was <laughs> a real question. Nate, you, you guys are one piece experts. Has Luffy ever stretched out his dick like a sword and sword fighted people uh, it, with it? It has. Well, In he hasn't done that. But... yes. I mean, well, yeah, but there was that, that one. Exactly. There, there was that one chapter where the those those, uh, those Amazon oh, ladies. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mumpy, what yeah. happened? Get, Mom, get ready for this. They like, what happened they, like, was stretched it. Yeah, I think they stretched there, there was it. A scene. All right, now listen they, to this. Listen to this. So, so Luffy once crash landed on an island of only women. He was found. You know, he was hurt really bad. A bunch of women found him unconscious. They brought him to a bath and they started bathing him. They took off all his clothes and they were like, "Oh my God, he's he's got like a mushroom attached to him. We got to pull this off." There was literally. <laughs> Chapters of this girl, I forget her name, Marianne or something, stre- trying stretching his dick. And they're like, "Oh, it's so stretchy. Why wouldn't it come off?" Trying to separate his dick from his body. He is getting jacked off in canon One Piece. Do they really draw have a it. picture of shit. a stretchy dick? They don't. No, no. it's under soap it. and shit. It's so off like frame. Soap. Yeah, and no. th- they do it because they don't know what a man is. Yeah, they that's, don't know what a dick wrong. is. Okay, it's pretty hot though, nonetheless. It's pretty great. Now, if yeah. it was a bunch of Amazon men, would Luffy be gay? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, well, not from that, but he, because he was unconscious. But then when he woke up, he would become gay immediately. That's, <laughs> as soon as you're aware. Well, awareness of sexual acts with men is what makes you gay. See, you guys, know, yeah, this is way more fun than animal rights. We should do whole episodes god. about what is gay. This is way more fun. Well, oh my god, <laughs> what is gay is a great topic. That's, let's come back. Me and Digi already that did that on our social media podcast, you faggot. Well, uh, maybe we can uh, weigh it on it too. We want to talk. Well, about the gayest thing we is can, copying can someone else's idea, yeah. so it's it's relevant. It was That's already true. decided that it's only gay if the balls touch. 
that that's a pretty good rule. That's of thumb, one I think. theory. Uh, okay, we got here, alternative theories. A what game about your own theory? <laughs> what about what about if one of your balls touches your other ball? Is that's that gay? gay? That's definitely no. gay. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah gay as hell. Gay? I'm gay right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's not a man alive who's not gay as if fuck. We're all gay, uh, then nobody's gay. Oh god. <laughs> all right, here's here's our last quagmire. question. <laughs> At at Pancake Monster asks, or at Pancake Monstay, because I guess they couldn't fit the R. Uh, what PCP member would be the easiest to kidnap? I'm going to say Ben Saint. Uh, I will f- email his address to you. Uh, no, yeah, he'll become whole, the easiest because we're going to dox him right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Ben Saint is just like ET. Only instead of Reese's pieces, just take garbage and he'll follow it and eat it. Ben, it, ben is very predictable. Tra- it, it, ben if you is leave very a trail of raisins. Mm-hmm. Ben will follow. It. That's true. Ben is Ben is very predictable. Uh, he's very weak-minded. He is very uh, susceptible yeah. to suggestion and trickery. So you yeah. know, I don't think you'll have much trouble. <laughs> I'm just like a deer in the headlights all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, that's it. I, that's the end of the questions. Perfect. Okay. We're done. <clears throat> Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, make sure you send us more next Saturday at TP Crassinators on Twitter. And thanks for listening. Hey, hey, hey. I want to plug I want to mm-hmm. plug my shit cuz I've been streaming lately. I've been streaming okay. lately. I've been streaming lately over at Saint Comics on Twitch. So uh, I've been I go there and I draw. So if you want to check that out, go fucking follow me there, you idiots. Oh, well, if you're going to plug streaming, I'm going to plug streaming cuz I've been streaming a lot uh recently on video games uh at uh, Twitch tv slash give and take you can go look at that subscribe to monkey jones oh okay. oh at best guy ever oh wait bestest guy ever. wait and while while i'm here also everyone go check out me and my girlfriend jackie's side channel there's one video up there it's ben and jackie's college fund uh get get it on the ground floor now uh before we take off and crush you all under our heels yeah, I gotta do that. You <laughs> Nate, won't regret Nate, it at all. You Nate, won't regret it at all. <laughs> Nate shrugs uncomfortably. <laughs> you guys should do a, a comedy skit where she's gonna give you a blowjob blindfolded, but then, <laughs> but then but, <laughs> that's, that's a good it, idea. Inspired by real events <laughs> <laughs> on, on, a, on, a, on a real podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 I'm supposed to. Supposed to.